This is the third video in the series, and this video is, is quite, quite compact, uh, fairly short, and so uh, they're going to cover, cover some essential things, but uh, it's not quite as long as the other ones. So where to begin? Uh, it's, it's difficult. I mean, I began, um, personally, I began with Derek's uh, Artificial Images group, which is really impressive what he's done. Uh, he and many other people who are part of that group, I'm, I'm a member, uh, you know, we, we use a Slack channel to communicate with one another, and it's a treasure trove, really, of uh, AI art practice. And so people are very responsive, very respectful. Uh, I highly recommend Derek's um, work, and his educational videos are spectacular. Uh, and you can get all that stuff within artificial images. So if you search for Schultz artificial images, you should get it. Uh, Gene Kogan uh, has done a huge amount of work and he's got this machine learning for art or ML for A. So just follow these hyperlinks and you'll get to Gene's extensive educational AI art videos and, and uh, notebooks and all kinds of cool things. Uh, there are numerous artists, or I would call, you know, we're all sort of hybrids, really, between design art and computing. And there, there are so many of them, but these two sort of stood out, and so I thought I'd put them on a slide. Now, what kind of software, what kind of technology do you need to know in order to, to start in, in, this, in, in this area? There are the easiest layer, what I would call web-based software layer. So this is kind of, this is down the rabbit hole, but not far down. Deep Dream, Deep, Deep uh, Dream Generator is a good place to begin to create some things. Art Breeder is an excellent place, an excellent web page, just to play around with breeding through kind of genetic programming, genetic algorithms, uh, different forms of, of art. Uh, Runway ML is also an excellent resource for doing machine learning and, and, and it, making it quite easy. Uh, you do have to buy credits, but, you know, basically the money is one of the issues with this area is you are going to have to, I guess in every area, really, you're going to have to spend some money ultimately if you want to continue to work on it. I think Runway ML gives you something like $10 of credit. <clears throat> If it hasn't changed since last time I looked. And there's some other tools. Again, just uh, click on the links. Cloud services. Um, there's many cloud services from Microsoft Azure to Amazon, AWS. Google has a cloud platform, but they also have something called Google Colab. In my opinion, Google Colab is the place to go Unless you've got your own machine and have, you know, you've really gone down to the rabbit hole, uh, Google Colab is really a great place to begin exploring things. However, it's a little bit more complicated uh, than just using a web interface, right? This layer above that. But that's kind of my recommendation is when you get, when you get tired of using the web to do stuff, uh, invest a little bit in Google, Google Colab. There's a free version, there's a $10 a month, and a $50 a month uh, version. And um, there, it's very good. It's a very nice service. And it uses, Google Colab basically uses a Jupyter Notebook style interface, which is nice because everything is in Python. Uh, everything's in Python or shell script, right? A Unix shell script. And, uh, you know, the notebook is a great way of sort of organizing information. In addition to markdown or, or text, things that you want to sort of, you know, comments you want to make and things you want to write about what your code is doing. So I would say, yeah, it's sort of hands down almost the number one um, software platform. The key thing I didn't mention before, it's, it's worth mentioning, you don't have to have a GPU. GPU is an essential hardware element uh, that's available on most computers, but the ones that do ML art are all based on NVIDIA architecture. 
And Colab has plenty of those machines. So what you're paying for really in, in, in Google Colab is the ability to use, to have a web-based internet access to their Google's machines. You don't have to have your own. Now that said, there are many artists that do have their own, but that's gonna be a bigger investment because now you need to get uh, GPU cards, which are not cheap. So that's what I say down here, dedicated machine. So really I should have like four levels deep, you know, um, the, the next to last, I mean, the, the last level would be having your own machine, right? But there, there are ways of using the uh, cloud as it were, by looking at places where you can, there's a dedicated machine that you essentially lease for a certain amount of money per hour in order to do ML art. And uh, some examples of this are Paperspace and Vast.ai. Uh, the one that I also use is the Texas uh, Advanced Computing Center hardware, which is available uh, to me because I'm, I work for a university. And so that's, that's very convenient and I'm lucky, right, to have that. But I can get access and hours usually for free off of the uh, tech supercomputing uh, network. Whether you have your own machine or whether you're gonna use a dedicated machine, but in the cloud, you really have to have some basic Unix familiarity. This is for the shell commands, right? You have to have a little bit of familiarity with how to copy files, move files, zip files, things like that. It doesn't take a long time. Um, I think many people just learn on the go. You know, you start with a notebook that's got a bunch of shell commands and you just play around with it, right? And you, you kind of learn by doing. So in terms of an incredibly condensed machine art uh, timeline, uh, it depends how far back you want to go because machines have always been with us. I mentioned this earlier, you know, we're joined as humans to technology ever since the invention of uh, spears and fire, right? But if you're looking at digital computing, you find a, a huge amount of work, an explosion really in the 1960s, using this new thing at the time called a digital computer. Uh, but you, know, you can go back further and I'll just mention uh, historical automata. I'm not talking about automata from uh, computer science theory. I'm talking about early work in automata, which were analog computers essentially, which have uh, would be developed for millennia uh, before there was such a thing called a digital computer. And certainly that's, uh, that's an example of art. Now, moving forward in time, processing was started in the early 2000s, a very popular programming language originally built on Java, but then extended to Python and JavaScript. Um, Okay, now neither of these two things were explicitly really AI or machine learning. Now AI, you saw the Deep Dream example where I took my Thomas Gainsborough painting of Mr. and Mrs. Andrews and I took a Deep Dream generator, the Deep Dream generator, and I ran it on that and got what you saw. There's also DC GAN, there's the original GAN, um, which then became, I think, ProGAN, which then became StyleGAN, and then there's a StyleGAN 2, and more recently a StyleGAN 3. So all of this, there, there's a lot of history with this stuff. It depends on what part, what segment of time you really want to focus on. Well, some recent machine art software, and there's no end to Colab notebooks coming out, but early work that, that I used you know, this is back in the early part of this year, 2021. I used D Big Sleep, Deep Days, and Aleph uh, Image. And if you just uh, Google these, you'll find um, notebooks that allow you to play around with, with these packages. A clip, which was, I can't believe, you know, it's only, it's only been around really since the January of this year. So we're talking, what, nine months ago? And, uh, but this has had a tremendous effect on the arts and design world. And the reason is because Clip was trained on a huge number, I believe 400 million image text pairs. So they had an image, like a photograph, and then they had like a caption 
or, or some text to go with it, some annotation. And this has been used by uh, creatives to start with text and then have images and audio and so on generated from that and to go the other way, other direction as well. Uh, diffusion models are more recent. I really love the, uh, the art that comes out of diffusion. And, uh, you know, StyleGAN 3 is, is very new. I mean, it just came out last month. I would say in terms of, so GANs are um, a family of different kinds of, of models. Again, GAN stands for Generative Adversarial Network, where you've got a generator, which is part of the overall architecture, and a discriminator. And uh, Derek does a great job on uh, explaining the history of GANs, kind of where, how it started and where, where we're going.